Welcome to Fort Drama Goal. Join us for episode 11. We're going to talk profes- professional. Who the fuck am I? Welcome to Fort Drama Goal, episode 11. We're going to talk some NFL. There's a crappy Thursday night football game on, so put it on mute, grab a glass, take a listen. Let's do this. All right, so like Kurt said, welcome to Fourth Dram and Goal. Um, I am what? I took a big gulp and I got a mouthful of peanuts. Okay, but that was nice. All right. <laughs> All right, so like as Kurt gets the nuts out of his mouth, um, welcome to Fourth Dram and Goal. As Kurt kicked us off with, um, I am Dick, and this is Kurt. We are co-hosts. And we wanted to welcome welcome you back, Drammers. Um, real quick before we get started, don't hesitate to follow us on the gram at Fourth Dram, Four T H Dram, and follow us on Facebook at Fourth Dram in Goal. Um, Kurt, before we get started and really dive into this agenda we got laid out today, probably going to talk about a little bit of the NFL, what's going on there. Uh, talk about Advent calendars. It is the hot topic in the whiskey world right now, in the whiskey tubes. And then I really want to hear what your wife is bitching about because I heard through the grapevine that you've been a bad boy. So I don't know if Santa knows yet. There's not going to be a short list to talk about that. A uh, couple things to chime in as we do our little introduction. Please hit us up on the social medias. We're at the point where we are. We want to listen from you. We want to take anything. We will throw a shout out. We want to answer your questions. So like uh, Dick said, hit us up on that. Yep. We're going to skip our typical what's in our glass segment because we've had so much fun doing this that we went ahead and did a, another episode with the same things. I'm still sipping on this rare breed rye, which is so good. And I'm still killing this high west rendezvous rye. So first topic on the agenda, uh, this is really kind of a, I don't know, a seasonal thing, but I'm going to challenge the stereotype here. I'm talking about whiskey advent calendars, right? Just the advent calendar in general great time-honored religious tradition that we whiskey tubers and podcasters have bastardized into how do we make this about us kurt i want to get your thoughts like what are your thoughts um on the the whiskey advent calendars i think it's great i think it if anything you're getting a what should i go buy right Which you you have enough of that on uh on the internet as it is but you get it in the short like so the 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 couple that we're going to talk about in a little bit, they're short videos. Mm-hmm. You literally just chime in. I've literally listened to them, you know, lunch break. And, uh, uh, you know, it's kind of like a, a list of what do you, what should you get? And you're literally getting what, 24, 25. Yeah. You basically get 25 mini reviews per, and they're not doing the same ones, which is kind of cool. No. And we've already talked. I've already sent you a couple texts yeah. like, Hey, I think I want to go grab this one. So I think if, anything uh you're getting that out of it so you know you you go into it more you know which ones are you enjoying and why or even more importantly what shouldn't you buy like i i've read if i mean we've listened and watched a few where i was like nope don't need that now Mm -mm. um that's another duke whiskey right there don't need that one um (laughs) so I, i think we should give a shout out um with this, the two that we're kind of referring to that we're watching a lot of is, you know, bourbon junkies. We love those guys. They get all the hype though. I think really who deserves a big shout out here is ADHD, Matt Porter. Um, he is killing it with his content lately. Um, I think he just hit over 10,000 subscribers, but the main reason for that, from what I understand is he just won the best whiskey taster of 2020 um, in a full blind event, there's actually a little YouTube video out there that you can watch hosted by Bardstown Whiskey. Um, really, really interesting, but legend has it. I mean, Matt Porter is the best whiskey taster in the world. Yeah, and I'm not going to pretend like I've watched a lot of Matt Porter's videos, but I, you know, he wins the contest. So I've been checking out his advent calendar and the dude knows what he's talking about. Like he's, it's legit. You, did you see the four barrels one? Uh, I don't think I saw that one. I'm sorry, Four Roses. Yes, I did see Four Roses. Yeah. yeah. Um, it out. He, he did. He was, he was like, oh, yeah, I'm working through all these distilleries. It's not this, not that. I'm like, 
dude, you're a fucking genius. Um, and he's like, oh, four rows is the one that's left. Process elimination. <laughs> yeah, no, he's good. I. Uh, it makes me want to trade. Kind of taste Bardstown stuff. I've never had Bardstown stuff. I have not either. And yeah, maybe because I haven't looked for it, but I haven't seen it. Um, have you seen Just, it? I uh, no. I, because what? I haven't. I haven't looked for it. Okay. <laughs> I wonder what price range smart. we're looking at. Uh, I don't know. I want to say 60s. 60s and 100s probably, yeah. 60s and above. I want to say that just as smart as he is on these, they're just as smart for doing that contest. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. At the at the peak of you know whiskey right now. That mm-hmm. was pretty damn smart. Uh, but it was legit. So, yeah, shout out to him. Bourbon Junkies. Well, I mean... They were, there's nothing to hide. They were they were kind of an inspiration. Yeah, but he's talking about whiskey. So yeah, of course that's something that you want to chime in. We just kind of put our sports twist on it. Exactly. You gotta pay ode back to the Godfuckers. <laughs> yeah, and they uh, they know their shit too. They've had a couple bottles on there that you've got to. It's cool because they'll be wrong, and they'll straight up say, "Oh shit, we were wrong." Like usually, like the rest of us normal people. Um, well, I don't know. Our con- the little tastings we've done. I, 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 I am not getting you a fucking savant glass gold bullshit. Not doing it, man. <laughs> not doing it. <laughs> yeah. But no, I gotta he, say, like, I do think that Dan has the upper hand when he uses that glass. Um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna think that I think Sean pulls it out this year. I don't know. I feel like his nonchalant attitude about the thing is, is, a, is a farce. I think he really does uh, care. And mm. there's your whiskey word for the day: farce. We're hoping we're at the point next year where maybe we'll do the same thing. I'm actually going to challenge you on that, man. You know me. You know I'm a little bit of a woodworker. I did build my own bar. I am actually targeting building us one, and we're going to do Christmas in July. And I'm going to get up. No, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. We're going to do Christmas in July. I'm thinking uh, you and I go in. We can buy some of those um, on Etsy. There's a couple shops that do barrel heads. And we can buy those barrel heads and I can actually take those barrel heads and convert them into a similar um, whiskey advent calendar that the bourbon junkies have. Cause I think, think, think that's my favorite style so far. There you go. Drammers. You heard there the you. news like me. And we're at Etsy I shop. Apparently see this 24 to three ass kicking the Rams to the Patriots. Perfect transition to our first sports topic. First seven loss season since what? 2002. It said, rough that was wasn't i thought they they lost a shit ton of games when brady got hurt the first time no matt castle came in and they oh, still now right. the thing that was weird about that year and i could be completely wrong i think we usually that, are which i am uh i think that was the year where there was uh a lot of teams with High wins, medium losses, if that makes any sense. No. So, like, what? A, like a 10 and 6 year? 9 oh, yeah. and 7? Gotcha. And maybe they didn't make the playoffs with Matt Castle. And I think maybe that was the Wildcat year for the Dolphins. Oh, shit. You're you. Ronnie Brown? Yeah. Dude, the first time the Wildcat came out and came into the pro game. Yeah. yeah. RIP, uh, their head coach. Uh, Tony, oh. anyway, I think I, I could be I could be combining years, but I think that's what I was going for. Yeah, uh, the Patriots. I don't know why the media lately was like, oh yeah, they won last week. They kicked the shit out of somebody relevant that I can't even remember. But no, they're they're not going to make the playoffs. They're not going to even compete in the division. Sad year. Uh, we'll keep an eye on that. Well, in the same division, though, dude, the Jets almost pulled out a W and then literally had it ripped away from them. (laughs) And one of the most comical finishes we've always talked about, not always, but we've talked about who the hell is Las Vegas? Do they even know who they are? They almost lose to the Jets and then win on a last second go route. Like, first of all, where the hell was the Jets secondary on that? Second of all, why the fuck was it a close game? (laughs) So we have become two things. We've become a 
Coach's Hot Seat Show, and we've become a Las Vegas Raiders show, but have you ever been fired for one mistake like Greg Williams was fired for his defense on one play? I mean, I've never been fired, so <laughs> say no, but <laughs> there's a first time for everything. Um, I don't know what's worse, <laughs> getting fired from the whole, like, hitman gate with the, the Saints, where, you know, the whole, like, pay you for hurting people, or because you went zero defense on like a last second play, which is yeah. apparently Dude. so bad that you got accused of tanking. Like you're playing cover one. Like you're just trying to get no, that first cover round. Zero. Like they went zero, <laughs> full on zero. Like you, you're just trying to get that first round draft pick. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh. for, for those we're blitzing six, there's no safety help one-on-one, you know, good luck everybody. Did. Like, anyway, I I just I, it was mind boggling. You're either begging for Trevor Lawrence, or you're just you're basically saying Greg Williams. We're gonna you're the saf- sacrificial lamb on that. But so talking about the the Patriots, obviously not gonna win the AFC East. Is there any other race out there that you're you're, you're wanting to predict right now? So I I'll, I'll pick up I'll pick up the NFC East. Um, I'm gonna call mm-hmm. it. I mean, you I literally would... pick the dog shit of the whole guy. Yeah, okay. Because I mean, it. why? That's the dumpster fires are the funnest yeah. to watch. Yeah, yeah. The Eagles win it all. So, I don't know if that's a, a, a risky or controversial statement, but I mean, they're they're garbage in themselves. Glass ass Wentz got replaced by Hertz, and they're still going to win it all. Win the division. Why are you giving me the look? I'm not frozen. I'm just not responding to that horse shit that you just said. Who's going to win? What do you mean who's going to win? It's not even... It's the Giants or the Redskins. Oh, fuck. Sorry. The Giants are the Washington football team. Really? You literally took the shittiest division in the whole league and you said the shittiest... Okay, you didn't say the homer. Okay, you have to you have to go on explain. So, I'm gonna say the Eagles, and I know they're sitting at third at three and eight. I mean, but I, I, I like it because it's bold, but it's so bold. That I I feel like it's it's a two game separation. It's not like it's it's there's four games left, Dick. So we've seen bigger races get. We've seen <laughs> larger margins get 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 depleted. I literally, I, I've never seen somebody pick something so shitty and then just shit on it even more. But I like the bold strategy. It's a, it's a bold strategy, Cotton. Um, it's a, call, call it a gut, call it intuition. I don't know. I mean, it's a shit show of a of a, uh, of a division right now. I just don't have faith in Jones. I don't have faith in. But you have faith in Jalen Hurts. No. I, I'm not gonna say yes to that because I feel like that's a loaded question. <laughs> I know. I, I'll tell you what. Who has faith? Not Nick Saban. Alex fucking Smith, dude. Dude, that's that's a very valid point. He no did. Shit. He he did. I don't want. I mean, I don't even want to talk about the Steelers win. But we have to talk about that. Did you Why? see what he did? Yeah. No, I mean, like, he played like Alex Smith of old. But no, 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 no. There was a very specific point in that game. They got to kick a field goal before halftime. Now, they won by six points, maybe. I don't know. I would have to check the score as I'm doing so right now as we speak. Alex Smith got sacked right before the half. He ran off the field with the football, and it was it was a six point game, twenty three to seventeen. He ran off the field with the football, so they had to stop the clock, giving the Washington football team time to get on the field and kick the field goal. Like he not only is comeback player of the year, but a, a fucking genius. <laughs> I like that you said that specifically because I just had this conversation with CJX last night, 
and we went round and round on Alex Smith specifically and how we both agree that the talks about Ben Roethlisberger being the comeback player of the year is a fucking sack of shit. It has to be Alex Smith. Well, who's had that talk? I mean, I've seen it on Reddit. I've seen it on various... The tabloids? Reddit's not a tabloid, dude. But yeah, sure. Um, I've seen it on various sports networks. Because um, yeah, I've seen they're literally changing the comeback player of the year. They're going to change to the Alex Smith player of the year. Well, I, I hope they do. I, I hope they do. I hope they do. But no. and on the flip side of that is I had not really looked up the pictures of his leg. Oh, there was a whole documentary on that. I didn't watch it. I didn't watch it because it, it was I'm, bad. It was so dude, bad. like his leg looked like a like a like a like a tidal wave. If like, you ap- <laughs> if you appreciate what he's done now, mm-hmm. watch the E60 and you will appreciate it. The dude was in a veterans hospital for rehab, which is an, a whole other awesome story in itself. But it was a bad, bad injury. I hear you. I mean, I, I kind of at a loss of words to be honest, which is rare for me. But no, it's not. You, sometimes yeah. it's better when you don't speak. I don't think so. I'll, I'll, I'll keep it going for you. Sure. Um, we got to talk about this. What the hell happened with Des Bryant Tuesday night? Oh, you mean where he went out there, hugged half of the Cowboys, and then said, "Oh yeah, I do have COVID." My bad, guys. My bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you knew he knew he had COVID beforehand. No, but that's the thing. He didn't. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm going to call bullshit on that. Maybe he had not tested positive, but you knew that he knew he was exposed at some point and should not have been. So he went on the Twitter rant. Like, a, I mean, he was literally sh- like telling people, share your wine picks because he just dove into wine. He was so depressed. And that the sad part is during the pregame, they did a series or a little special and he was talking about his mental health, the problems he went through after the cowboy thing. And then he gets hit with that. I mean, it was a weird thing. And I'm I'm going to, I'm going to talk about somebody who I, I hold in high regard. Ryan Clark, when talk, when Ryan Clark talks on ESPN, I listen. It's very rare that Ryan Clark says something that I'm like, Oh, I don't agree. I mean, he played the game, you yeah. know, awesome. He said that it was downright scary, and he also said he kind of wishes that the NFL had just lied to us and kept him on the field because then instead, as viewers, we see Des Bryant warming up with everybody, hugging everybody, and then it's like, okay, let's just go ahead and play the game. I mean, he had a point. Uh, it's, it's a scary, valid point, right? It's it's like keep us in the dark, you know. Keep ig- ignorance is bliss, right? Say he tested yeah. positive after the game, you didn't know better, but no, you knew. Everybody on the field is exposed at that point. Half the Cowboys organization is exposed at that point. Like, you'd be it was irresponsible. I think is what you're driving at, right? It was irresponsible yeah. to have the game. No, and, and, and nobody needed to have that game, but we nobody need- nobody needed that game. Cowboys didn't need that game. Ravens did right. not need that game. But the NFL needed that game. That's no, what Ryan didn't. Clark says. No, they didn't. They knew For better. Money. They knew. Well, you're going to cancel Cowboys Ravens. You're going to cancel not hashtag not America's team, but still gets a high audience every year. Hashtag for the first time ever was scheduled for a Sunday night America's game and then got kicked down. Got kicked down by the freaking New York football Giants. (laughs) No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a Giants game. So it's embarrassing, man. It's embarrassing. You're talking about. I'm not going to call the Cowboys Blantons. No, because Blantons is good I juice. I will call the Cowboys Jack Daniels single barrel. Man, you say that, and like, I really want to go to Jack Daniels single barrel. It's been a fight for me not to grab one lately. But and I'll talk Jack Daniels single barrel getting replaced by a. Early times whiskey, possibly. Old tub. Mm, okay, that's fair enough. Fair enough. I feel like the old tub and Browns are, are similar. Um, they both have shitty names, and nobody knows why they keep it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man. I, I I feel like this is karma at its finest. 
Coma. With, with I, me. I, dude, it's like my fifth drink tonight. Um, <laughs> I think at the end of the day, there isn't room for consistent, systematic failure to effectively manage an organization. And this is one of those, it's not everything the NFL could do, but it's something. Maybe. What the fuck are we talking about? <laughs> you went, I told you we were going to jump off that deep end. I know. I, 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 let's reel people back in. Most underrated TV sports journalists go. Underrated or overrated? Underrated. Ooh, I'm not sure that any of them are underrated. What do you think of Dan Orlowski? The old quarterback? Yeah. I don't know. Like the few times I've heard him, he announces games. And he did a game recently that I watched. And I was like, what the fuck is this clown? Um, Dan Orlowski says things that pisses me off. Most but announcers. You no, know he's no, but you know, he's he's a football genius. He talks smart. But then, like he was doing the other, th- he was doing the thing where he was defending Carson Wentz, which there's nothing to defend. He's playing like trash. And then the thing that he did last year that really got to me, he was defending the the 49ers, throwing the ball at the end of the Super Bowl when everybody in America was saying just keep running the ball and you probably win the Super Bowl. So he does things like that. But I think he's like the Stephen A. Smith where he does things that he knows is going to get people kind of like. He likes to be controversial. Yeah. But damn, he's smart. I will give him that. Um, But why can't everybody just be like um, Tony Romo? Like, why can't they just be like smart and. Tony Romo is different, though. Tony, Tony Romo, Tony Romo is like different. a god amongst announcers. And I'm glad we're talking about this because I was watching the Pat McAfee show the other day, who's another definite He's, ins- inspiration for this. For sure. Um, he was saying that people were talking about how bad NFL commentators were. And honestly, since Booger, and I hate to do this, but I guess the memes and the videos put Booger in the spotlight. I haven't noticed any really bad ones this year. Have you? Yes. Joe Buck and Troy Aikman should not be calling anything. Okay. Tell me why Troy Aikman should not be calling anything. Because Troy Aikman wasn't a good announcer because ever. Because he hates on the Cowboys. No, 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 no. That was his team. No, no. Because I read an article yesterday that got me fired up. At the end of that Cowboys game, Troy Aikman made a comment like, I don't know where this organization organization even needs to start. And people were like, oh, he's ripping into it. He's ripping into him. But he's not much. wrong. He's not wrong. No, he's he's not wrong. Okay, Joe At Buck. All. I don't even think of Joe Buck. That's the problem. But, but he's but there. What's wrong with Troy? I don't think that inherently Troy Aikman was a good announcer from the get-go. I don't feel like that he transitioned his knowledge of the game into being effective and informative of, to the viewer like someone like Tony Romo has. You have I to look. I think Troy calls it like it is. I don't think so at all. I, I, I do agree with his comments, and frankly. And you're a Cowboys fan. I know. I, 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 but I, that's the thing. I do agree with his comments. I don't think he's wrong at all. I appreciate the fact that he said it. I'm just not a Troy Aikman post-1999 fan. It's not. I mean, like me, like me, like me or love me for my comment or think, oh, you're ill-informed or, hey, you don't know what you're talking about or, hey, you're drunk. It wouldn't be the first time. I'm okay with it. Like, oh, I'm, I, I, I just don't. That's surprising. Troy, I enjoy. I just I was know. upset at that article yesterday. I, I do not like most football announcers, period. Like, it, it's just it's, it's a pet peeve of mine because – I feel like they're always hitting the, oh, let me tell you this one random fact about this one person on the team every time I call one of their games because I interviewed them once. How many times do you have what to What do you hear? want them to talk about, Dick? I want them to fucking call the game. I don't need to hear their insightful commentary on this person's childhood. Well, then all- with all the, I mean, there's so many stops in the game. Then how about this? Don't be repetitive. Shut the fuck don't, up. Don't go Joe Buck World Series where he kept talking about what's his name? Soto. He's 18, 19. We get it. But I miss I mean, John Madden. 
Okay, you missed I'm John Madden. Colorful what you- commentary. Boom! Bow! Like it's like it's oh, then you do this and you do that. Like it's fun to watch. It's it's like watching these like robots who are all the same but have these little quirks that aren't entertaining. They're annoying. What do you think about Collinsworth? Chris Collinsworth. I am not a fan either. I didn't think so. I I do not need to hear anything from some guy who played Here's a on guy. the Bengals for like nine years as a third string wide receiver try to tell me about You're how such defensive a fun sucker. sucker. You're such I don't a like fun sucker. He does not have he doesn't give insightful comment. Like you had this illustrious career. Here's a guy that thinks he knows everything. Mm. <laughs> you talking about me? Because I don't. I don't know oh, anything. No, no, no. I was talking about Chris Collinsworth. Oh, Chris Collinsworth is a bag of dicks. Um, <laughs> hater. Anyway, back to back to on the. Field. Oh, dude, we went on a fucking rant. How about Chris? Collins- <laughs> Chris, Chris. No, it's good. It's good. Chris Collinsworth whiskey. What is he? Go. Um, pin hook. Why? Overpriced. Should have just kept it and put a wine in that bottle. I don't know why people have this fandom for it. Bottle looks like shit, but they claim to be high class. Just because you put horses on things doesn't make it cool. Blends. Um, Tell me how you really feel. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't like Pinhook's shtick. So, yeah, I don't like Collinsworth's shtick. All right, I got one for you, John hey, Madden. Man. What whiskey is he? Yeah. As I take another drink of this, give you this layup is here. So good. John Madden is the mixers of whiskey. Ooh, explain. He's up there. He's a go-to. He's great, but he's never going to be Howard Corsell, a.k.a. Pappy. He's going to be there. Mm-hmm. You're going to be in a bar. You're going to see Pappy 23, and you're going to see Michter's 20. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you want that John Madden, but he's never going to be Howard. Different things, more traditional. Different strokes, different folks. Yes. John Madden is the Michter's. I was going to say OGD 114 because it's Shut short, stumpy, and punches you in the mouth. <laughs> I, you know, right. I can't do an episode without talking about OGD 114, bro. I know. All <laughs> right. So, I, I, okay, let's go straight to the fucking skip the date, skip the dinner. Let's go to the bedroom. Super Bowl predictions. Hit me. Mm, I'm going to say something controversial. Maybe not after this weekend. I don't understand the hype about the Steelers. I've watched them play a few times. Maybe I'm missing something. It's completely possible. I don't think they're that good. I think the Ravens on the flip side are that good. They've lost some games. They have better weapons. I'm going to say Ravens, Chiefs, NFC Championship game. Winner, Chiefs. I'm going to say the NFC, you've got... Seahawks and Saints. Saints win. Saints Chiefs. Chiefs win. All right. So you said a lot there that I'm glad you went into. You talked about so you said Saints over the Chiefs, correct? Yep. No, I said Chiefs over Saints. Okay, so who's quarterbacking for the Saints? Noodle arm breeze, bro. Okay. I'm not impressed with the Ravens whatsoever. I don't care what they did to the Cowboys this last week. The Steelers, everyone's talked about that. You can go through every game they've played and you can talk shit, blah, 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 blah. They beat the Ravens. You can do the same thing with the Chiefs. The thing about the Chiefs, except for the Raiders game, the Chiefs are a team that I feel like no matter who they're playing – they may not blow them out, but they're going to find a way to win. That goes back to last year. It goes back to their little playoff stretch. Great. Texans, they're getting their ass kicked. Turned around, kicked their ass. The 49ers, they were losing. Found a way to win. This last week, the fucking Broncos found a way to win. I don't, I don't think the Chiefs are a team that you can say they're just going to kick anybody's ass they play. I think they're going to find a way to win. 
The Steelers, I don't think the Steelers can be like the Chiefs. I think if they run into a, a good team in the playoffs, they don't find a way to win. I think it's going to be tough. Like, if they had to go against, like, the Titans again, who they barely beat the first time, I think that would be rough. If I had to make a prediction, I'm absolutely picking the Chiefs in the AFC. The NFC, it is a it's a complete toss-up right now. The Seahawks one week will look fantastic. The next week they look like shit. Um, I mean, who else do you have? You've got the Packers, same thing. They only have three losses, but they got smoked by Tampa Bay one weekend. And then who was it a couple week in, a couple weeks ago? Who was it? It was uh, the Colts. They lose to the Colts. It was a weird overtime game, but still. Colts defense, so damn. Yeah. Uh, the Colts is another race we didn't really talk about. Who, who do you think, just quickly, who do you think comes out of that, the Titans or the Colts? So the way I'm looking at it right now, like the Titans are going to win. But the Colts are a bubble team, right? So they're, they're on the bottom of the bubble. They're, they're in, but they're they on the, the bottom. the same record as the Titans. Yeah, but the Titans are first in the AFC South. Okay. They have the head-to-head. I like where you're going with this. I think my follow-up question, though, is like, when I say the Ravens, I assume, as we're recording this, that the Ravens beat the Browns this week, right? The Week 14 matchup. But if they don't, I think my my pick gets replaced. I think it's Bill Steelers, right? So my question to you is, Browns. What are your thoughts? Can we- Thank you. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll give you that. Uh, to answer the Super Bowl pick, I know early in the year I said you were wasting my time talking about the Rams. I'm going to go Chiefs Rams Super Bowl. Uh, just because that was the one I hoped we had gotten two years ago. Uh, the Browns. Uh, Are they going to brown us? Um, they look good this last week, man, but they look good for the first half. And then they're, they've are they done that before. What was it? It was a big game against the Cowboys. Cowboys caught up. Big lead against the Eagles. The Eagles caught up. And then a big lead, huge lead against the Titans, and the Titans caught up. It, we'll see how they do against the Ravens. If they can beat the Ravens or even keep it close as compared to the beginning of the year, they've grown – and then they end the year with the Steelers. Maybe I still see them as a team that's going to play somebody decent in the first round and probably lose. I mean, honestly. Is Mayfield the real deal? No. <laughs> Sorry. No. no that's, that's what I need to know. Let me shoot this off to you. Bengals, Washington football team. Cowboys, Bengals, Texans, Eagles, Jaguars, and then this week against the Titans. I know you can do that for every team, but these are their losses. The Raiders, the Steelers, and the Ravens. Those are teams they're going to have to play in the first or second round. The only team that I'm like, oh, shit, they beat them were the Colts like in week five. Right. So – I mean, if they if they if they play the teams in the playoffs, you get rid of the shitty win, shitty teams. I I just don't see them. I see them playing the Raiders in the first round, and right now I would have to take the Raiders over the Browns. Yeah, eh, I don't know. I think this goes back to we don't know who the Raiders are. I would take the Browns just to make it interesting. All right, so we made our calls. We have an idea of what we think the playoffs are going to look like literally four weeks prior to the playoffs actually being locked in. Um, We talked a little bit about my controversial pick of the Eagles, pulling it out the way I see it, looking at their schedule. And once again, could be wrong. If they win out, they've got two conference matchups against the giants. I'm sorry, the Cowboys and the, the the, uh, Washington Redskins. Then they actually have a shot. They have a shot to 
bring it down to something that some cards fall their way. But that's my controversial pick. Did you say shot? Shot, 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 shot. God. I think we have to have an unexpected segment of what is in Coach's Cup. I'll entertain it, but what spurred that? Did you say the word shot? Oh, okay. Um, you don't get to go first. I get to go first. Um, <laughs> well, who, what? Because I need to think about it now because you just had it in your head. Um, what is in pro, college, any Doesn't sport? Matter. Lay it on me, Dick. What is in Cliff Kingsbury's cup? Cliff Kingsbury? Cliff Kingsbury is going to go for the look. He's going for the bottle. Here comes He's the going accents. for the eye catcher. He's going for the, I may be a poor man's Ryan Gosling. I may not. I'm going to get the job done. I'm looking down the aisle, and I'm going to pick you right away. And somebody's going home tonight with this lucky little feminine bottle. Cliff Kingsbury is going home with some angel's envy in his cup. Because you see those wings, baby. And you're just drawn to it. Some drink in your cup, Dreamers. That is the answer. All right. Cliff Kingsbury. Angel's envy, baby. Mm. Bourbon? Dry. Oh, he's a bourbon. He's a bourbon. I was thinking a little sweetness. So maybe he'd be the rye. All right. And just like his hair, it's going to be neat. I'm going to go 180 on you there. Ooh. What is? Love it in the back end. Ooh. What is in Bill Parcell's cup? He's still alive? Um, <laughs> what point in his life? Are we talking about like Bill's Bill Parcells? Are we talking about, I'm sorry, Giants Bill Parcells, Cowboys Parcells, or like today Parcells? Let's go. Uh... Prime Giants would be too easy. Let's go Cowboys, Bill Parcells. When they were decent or when they sucked at the end? I think it varies. Bill Parcells, I just made Tony Romo the starter. Oh, just made Tony Romo the starter. There's hope. There's hope. Um, I mean, this is a hard one to do. So I'm going to go Texas. Just are in Texas. I'm going to keep it in a Texas whiskey. I'm going to keep it in like a real Texas whiskey. I'm going to go Garrison Brothers Balmoria from the simple fact that in that situation, you don't know quite what you're going to get. You know that you're going to get something solid because it's coming from a solid distillery, but it's still a wild card. Like, you don't know if this wild card about that. Balmoria? Is delicious. Sure. It is a candy heaven. Says Bill Parcells as he's making Tony Romo the starter. The, and every- only, <laughs> the only thing that you said that made me think was Texas. So I'm thinking dry and shriveled at times. I don't know. I don't know. But half of Balcones' brand lineup. But <laughs> no, I had to I had to go sweet because I think in that moment, like you think about Bill Parcells, right? You know, he's still he's still Bill Parcells that you know from like the Giants and the greatness. And he's making he's got a young quarterback and it, everything's sweet and nice in there, but there's still an unknown, man. I mean, Garrison Brothers being in Texas and being kind of a younger distillery, you see variations in their product every year, right? They have not hit that Buffalo Trace manufacture the shit out of the same bottle every year. There is ebbs and flows and i think that's kind of where you're at like i know it's going to be good but how good is it going to be it could be it could be whiskey of the year it could be whiskey of the year right but it could fall a little flat and i think that's what you always saw with tony romo in that situation especially that bill parcells area moments of glory and then fumbled uh extra point snaps or field goal snaps like like what are you getting i don't know Eh, that's my answer went down a whole dark history there take it or leave it all right, all right, I like it. All right, so we're getting into that fourth dram. What's the wife bitching about, Dick? So I've been a good boy. Been a good boy. Um, 
Not like you. You're Santa's naughty list. Um, I have actually been cleaning out the cabinet. My birthday was recently, so I got a few extra bottles in the cabinet that I have, didn't have to go buy. I honestly have not been to the liquor store since Black Friday, and that is going on 13 days. That's the most recent record for me. I mean, that's almost two weeks. You get a coin for that. I think I do. I think, like I said, is it a problem or a solution? You could argue it either way. But so which is shot at people that have gone to AA probably shouldn't go there. I don't think you're listening to this if you've gone to AA, but hey, if you have and you're sober and you're still listening, more power to you. Respect your game. Keep the hustle up, baby. The what she is going to be looking for, what is she going to be bitching about is when I go looking for another bottle because I kind of have to have it right now. I don't think it's that hard to find. Don't you say it. Old Forester, single barrel. Oh, I want it. I did, I want I did it. not. I did not know you were going there. I want it. Now, if I get the call for some George C. Stag, she's gonna be bitching up a storm. That's where I thought you were going. Because I would give up my line in the COVID vaccine race line right now oh. to get me some George C. Stag. Oh. Now, if I can't that. taste it, I'm gonna be a little pissed. But, ouch. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, so that that's my kind of dark dark answer. Once you uh, brighten our days, <laughs> what is your wife bitching about? Uh, not too much. Uh, I did spend a pretty penny on the rare breed, which was what 55, 56. 55. But if I'm saying it's worth the bitching because it is good, I would buy it. I would buy it at 65. It's it's very very good. Um, just like you, you said the magical bottle. We've talked about this. George T. Stag is my top of everest it's so 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 good the only bottle that i would put up there with it eh taylor single barrel i like the heat it's such a good heat uh, i've been fortunate enough like i said two bottles of george t stag but yeah that's what i've got right now the rare breed 55 i, I i'm not gonna lie i do want to probably go back and get that bell four rye store pick which was 89 but I can't tell you if I would get it or not because I haven't got it yet. <laughs> All right. So Kurt, I think at this point we know how much time we're going to be spending in the doghouse over Christmas break. So I'm going to ask you, can you go and close this out? I think I can get us there. All right. Guess that Before I close this out, you know, this with the social media reminders one more time for sure. All right, drammers. If you're listening, you're a drammer. Um, not a drummer. Keep your nuts off my drums. Um, so, drammers, don't forget to follow us on Facebook. That's 4th Dram and Goal. Insta, 4th Dram. Hit us up. We are active. We are responding. We're here for you. And then, of course, we want your feedback. We want your questions. Email us at 4th, D R A M A N D. G O A L fourth dram and goal at gmail.com. We're here for you, man. We're, we're, we're doing this. This is our, uh, this is our side hustle. We're trying to be big time. Probably won't get there, but we're gonna have fun. We're going to try. Hell yeah. Hit us up with your questions. Like we said earlier, we are at that point. We want as much as possible right now. Give us your questions. Give us your interests. We We just want to talk to people. We will talk about it. Uh, hey, we haven't even shout out the guy who made these awesome glasses. And we got it made by Dick. Who was it? Um, so at Barrel Raised on Instagram. Uh, he's got an Etsy store, Barrel Raised as well. Kicking ass. Keep it up. All right, Dick. Well, it is that time for the quote. Since we were talking about Mr. Bill Parcells, I'm going to keep it simple. You are what you are. Bill Parcells. Endorse it, live it, love it, to the next snap, and to the next dram. Drink on, drammers. <laughs>